Hello, friends. I really went for it with that one, but hi! I'm excited, because this is part two. This is a sequel. Sequels are always better than the original. That's not true. The original Robocop was better than the sequel. Fight me. I don't care. Anyway, this is a sequel to a story from Reddit user Lydesi. This is The Big Boys Next Door. Disco Inferno. Burn, baby, burn. Let's get into it. Hey, Moonhorse. Hi. I was tickled pink that you read my story about the big boys. Well, thank you so much for sharing it with us. It was quite magical. I unfortunately researched your bear talk, and now I hate my life and regret every second of it. Did you learn things? Did you learn things you can't unsee? Mm-hmm. It's magical, isn't it? I've known several. They're wonderful people. Don't don't get too bent out of shape. However, it is a perfect explanation of what these people are. It will now be referred to as the Bear Cave. Smart move. The owner of the apartment will now be known as Papa Bear because he seems to be the broodmaster, and all of the little pork rinds seem to gravitate towards him. This is another set of events that transpired among these walking bloated rotisserie chickens. <laughs> Oh, they learn so quickly, don't they, children? <laughs> at the apartment complex that we lived at, they regularly hosted little get-together events on the rooftop. One night, there was a disco-themed party that was being held up near the pool. I just so happened to be putting out my trash when Papa Bear and two of his bear cubs walked out. You're learning vocabulary, I see. By the looks of their outfits, I surmise they were headed to the roof. Papa Bear adorned shorts that were similar to 70s basketball shorts, as in way too goddamn tight and way too goddamn short. His thighs looked like bread overflowing out of a bread pan and were turning red by how hard they were being compressed. Okay, it's one thing to wear tight clothing to accentuate, but if you're physically harming yourself, honey, stop. That's not okay. He also had a fake afro and some of those groovy 70s sunglasses. The cubs were both wearing normal neckbeard attire, some shit graphic t-shirts and shorts. I knew at this point I had to go up there to see what was about to take place. I took the elevator upstairs and descended out into the pavilion. The three kielbasa sausages were at the snack table devouring shrimp cocktails like alley cats that hadn't been fed. Oh god, seafood. Nothing too interesting so far. I figured I'd walk down and have a seat by the fireplace. I noticed a m lady that I had befriended earlier in the month and decided to go make small talk with her. About 30 minutes had elapsed as we got lost in conversation. She and I both laughed at the song Sandstorm by Darude came on. How does it go again? Milady stated that she needed to go refill her drink real fast and that she would be right back. As she stood up and turned around, she very audibly stammered, What on God's green earth? And I saw her transfixed on the gathering area. I turned to see what she was looking at. I was not, and will never be prepared for what I saw. About fifteen, yes, fifteen, of these stinky shits had literally almost materialized out of nowhere and were going absolutely crazy on the dance floor. I kid you not when I say the smallest one of them was probably 300 pounds. Papa Bear was rallying his cubs like this was a 90s rave. There's absolutely no son of a bitch in way they weren't all on some sort of drug. Oh. Oh, honey. I'm positive they were. They were moving as nimbly as 18-year-old ballet dancers. There were two, yes two, no joke, wearing fedoras. I watched in absolute horror as their sweaty bodies collided and bounced around like popcorn popping in the old popcorn maker from hell. Here's where shit gets from benign to absolutely disgusting to downright goddamn inhumane. Once I had my fill of watching this mass of sweaty honey baked hams bang around, I decided to go to the market downstairs and get some beer so I can forget the fact that the limits of my medication have been exceeded by what I've just witnessed. I glared into the beer cooler in a bit of a daze and heard a familiar voice that I heard moan oh so many times. 
Papa Bear. Papa Bear is with five of his cubs in the chip aisle. One of the cubs giggled in Papa Bear's ear. God damn, I don't even want to repeat this. Uh oh, Daddy, I missed my britches. Oh man! Oh God! Oh man! Oh God! Oh man! Oh God! Oh man! Oh God! Oh man! Oh. Oh, we're getting into some weird shit, kids. He just laughed and grabbed his sides and went tickle tickle and kissed him on the forehead. Papa Bear stated, don't worry, we'll shower you off once we get back upstairs. I felt like I was getting tunnel vision. I couldn't believe what I just heard. I didn't want beer anymore. I left the store and practically ran to my apartment. Later in the evening, I could hear all of them in the shower, all of them making the same disgusting sounds, laughing, moaning, God, just make it stop. Thank you for suffering through that, but I can no longer live alone with this knowledge. I'm debating about sharing this because of how remarkably disturbing it was. Thank you all for holding on with me. If need be, we can use the comments section to comfort each other. Thank you for providing the best narration on YouTube, Moonhorse. Oh, thank you very much. Sorry you had to suffer through this as well. Best wishes on trying to memory dump this story. While I appreciate your your warnings, this is not the worst thing I've heard. Oh, I've learned so many things in my time, and I'm hoping that that little comment doesn't uh, doesn't spur us into explaining some other things. But it probably will, so I'm going to. Yes, bears are a thing, and most of them are perfectly wonderful people. I've known several, and they're very nice. However, it is kind of a thing that, like, no straight people know, and honestly, how? Do you not have internet? Do you not- I guess you don't look at the same things I do. I guess you don't go into the weird parts of the internet. And oh, honey, I've gone there. But if this little comment about messing the britches is what I think it is, we might be dealing with a little ABDL action. Yeah, that stands for Adult Baby Diaper Lovers. Uh-huh. And while I can absolutely defend every single aspect, well, not every single aspect, let's be honest, defend several people who fit into the bear community because they're all wonderfully lovely people. I mean, obviously not every single one of them. I don't know everyone, but the vast majority seem very nice, and I've known a few. I ain't down with the diapers. No, sir. Not at all. That's where I draw the line. And believe me, this is not the only community they've infiltrated. Oh, no. There are diapered furs, too. I know. I've seen them. I've learned so many horrible things in my time, children, and believe me, as much as I uh, enjoy your fantastic narration there, Lydesi, I will promise you Things can get so, so much worse. In fact, I'm, I'm very tempted to bait you all into looking up horrible things because I'm realizing how much power I actually have now. <laughs> and how you're all, like, googling things that I've said. Which you shouldn't. Because if you have any knowledge of the things that I know, you'll know that won't end well. <laughs> I've spent many years exploring just the worst parts of the internet, and believe me, if the worst that you have is some rather vocal, rather raunchy, gay bear neighbors, it's not the worst it could be. Yes, the fedora thing is a little weird, but like we said, it's the fedora that means the most, and while it's a little uh, unsettling that they go that level for fashion. Seriously, tight's fine, but don't hurt yourself. There's like a thing. Besides, if you're planning on, you know, getting more physical, you might want to be able to take those shorts off in a way that doesn't involve a pair of safety scissors, if you know what I'm saying. So, while I'm aware that they're probably interesting fellows, and I'm really hoping it's not the ABDL thing, I'm really hoping it's just, uh, you know, making some kind of weird joke, You'll know if it's the other thing. You'll know. A lot of the ABDL community isn't exactly subtle, from what I've seen. Some are, 
but not a lot. There's literally a, a woman I remember a while back from a video I saw who writes entire songs about being a, a BDL, all about, you know, pissing yourself and things like that. Classic music. So, yeah, believe me, it gets worse. I'm, I'm so tempted to, like, just lay out a list of horrible things that you guys could look up, but I won't do that to you, because I'm now starting to understand exactly how much power I have, and I'm starting to realize that I really shouldn't abuse it in that way. <laughs> but I'm tempted to. <laughs> so, thank you again for sending in another chapter of this very interesting story. If you guys have enjoyed this, if you guys, if you guys, if you people, I can use words, have enjoyed this wonderful story, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. It's a YouTube thing. Just do it. It messes with the algorithm. They start to think I'm popular, and they start recommending me to strangers. Which I'm okay with, because it's horrifying. Let's keep doing it. Fuck the algorithm. Let's break it. Also, I have a Ko-Fi if you'd like to donate to this channel. I now do monthly donations as well, and I would greatly appreciate it if you would. It keeps the lights on in here so I can keep doing, you know, this and other things. I have a merch store too, which is like donating, except that you get like a hoodie or a t-shirt or a coffee mug. I sell coffee mugs. They're actually really nice. I also have a subreddit, r slash moonhorse stories. You can send stories there. There's also a thread specifically on there if you'd like to recommend the weird things that we can talk about on stream, because yes, there is a live stream every Saturday. So with all that being said, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, everybody.